This video contains solutions to problems from section 6.4 on working with Taylor series. So for these first group problems, we're going to be using our knowledge of Taylor series to, to find power series solutions to differential equations. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to imagine that the solution of this differential equation is some power series. And because the given value is at x equals 0, then the center of this series is going to be at 0. So this series is going to look like c0, some coefficient, some constant coefficient, plus c1x, plus c2x squared, and so on, c3x cubed, plus c4x to the fourth, and so on. And we're being asked to find the first five terms. So all we need to do is figure out those five coefficients, c0 through c4. Now, because they tell us that y of 0 equals 5, if we plug 0 into this power series, everything is going to go away except for the c0. We're going to get 5 equals c0, but then we're going to get c1 times 0 plus c2 times 0 squared, and so on, and a whole bunch of zeros. So that's going to tell us that c0 is 5. So we've already figured out one of the five coefficients we need to figure out. The rest of them are going to come from this equation, the fact that we know that y prime is equal to 3x squared plus 2y. So because we have a power series representation for y, we can find power series repre representations for both sides of this equation. A power series for y prime would be just taking the derivative of each of these terms. The derivative of c0 is 0, the derivative of c1x is c1, and so on. We get 2c2 times x plus 3c3 times x squared plus 4c4 times x cubed. And then when we take the derivative of the next term of the series, we get 5c5x to the fourth, and so on. And then 3x squared plus 2y, what that will look like, well, 2y is going to just double all of the coefficients of my original power series for y. So 2z0 plus 2c1x plus 2c2x squared plus 2c3x cubed plus 2c4x to the fourth and so on. So that's 2y that I've just written. But now when I add 3x squared, all that's going to do is add 3 to the coefficient of x squared. So let me fix that. So the in, instead, the coefficient of x squared is going to be 2c2 plus 3, because I've added 3x squareds there. And so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of the coefficients of the equal powers of x and set those equal to each other. And each of those equalities is going to give me another coefficient of my power series. So the first equation is going to tell me that 2c0 equals c1. And since I know that c0 is 5, that's going to tell me that c1 is 10. The next equation tells me that 2c2 equals 2c1. Divide out the 2s, that tells me that c2 equals c1, so c2 is also 10. Keep going, I get 2c2 plus 3 is equal to 3c3. The left-hand side of that equation is 23, because c2 is 10. And then, so 23 equals 3c3, that's going to tell me that c3 is equal to 23 divided by 3. And then the last equation that we'll need, right, again, we only need to figure out up through c4. The next equation is 4c4 equals 2c3. So we know that c4 is 1 half of c3, which means that c4 is going to be 23 over 6. So those are my coefficients of my power series. So my power series representation for my solution is that y equals c0, that's 5, plus c1x, plus c2x squared, plus c3, which is 23 over 3, x cubed, plus c4, which is 23 over 6, x to the fourth. And so that's my power series solution. And there's nothing stopping me from going further, right? So we could figure out as many terms of this power series as we would like. And again, depending on what you're trying to do with the solution of this differential equation, this may or may not be enough terms to get you an accurate answer to what you want to do. Similar problem here, we're going to do a few of these, they're all going to kind of be the same, so same basic idea. Again, we first pay attention to where the center of our series is going to be. The center of the series is going to be where the given point is. In this case, again, we're given uh, the initial value at x equals 0, so that's going to be the center of our series. So just like before, our series is going to look like y equals c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus c3x cubed plus c4x to the fourth, and so on. Knowing that y of 0 equals 1 is going to tell us that c0 equals 1. So that's why we want to center the series there, is because it, that gets us started, right? If we don't have the series centered at the same point as the given initial value, we can't even get started. We don't know where to begin our power series. Okay, 
So again, we're going to do two things. We're going to take the derivative of this power series because our left-hand side of our equation is y prime. So we're going to get c1 plus 2c2x plus 3c3x squared plus 4c4x cubed plus 5c5x to the fourth and so on. And then we're going to write down x squared y. So multiplying this power series by x squared, that's going to shift all of the coefficients two spaces to the right. So I'm not going to have any constant term. I'm not going to have any x term. I'm going to start my power series at c0 x squared, and then c1 x cubed, and then c2 x to the fourth, and so on. That's what x squared times y will look like. So that means that in this x squared y power series, my constant term is 0, and my x coefficient is also 0. So my equations look like c1 equals 0. OK, that's information that's helpful to us. 2c2 equals 0, which means that c2 will be 0. 3c3 equals c0. c0 is 1, so that means c3 is going to be 1 third. And then 4c4 equals c1. But c1 was 0, and so that means that c4 will also be 0. So our solution here, our power series, is that y is going to be my constant term 1 plus 0x plus 0x squared, plus 1 third x cubed, plus 0x to the fourth. And again, we were just asked for the first four terms, so that's what we want. All right, one more of these. This one involves the second derivative, but we're going to apply the same principles. So again, our series is going to be centered at 0. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this if we didn't have both of our initial values centered at 0, as you'll see, but fortunately they are, so we're good to go. So we're going to start with our normal power series representation for y and then set up our equation using our derivatives. So again, the fact that y of 0 equals 4, that's going to tell us that c0 equals 4. Now, to get to y double prime, we first, first have to take y prime. That's going to give us c1 plus 2c2x plus 3c3x squared plus 4c4x cubed, plus 5c5x to the fourth, and so on. And here, the fact that y prime of 0 equals negative 3, again, when we plug in 0 into that y prime series, everything's going to go away except for c1, and so that's going to tell us that c1 is negative 3. So we've already got two out of our five coefficients without really having to do much at all. Finally, y double prime, we're going to take the second derivative here. That's going to give us 2c2 as our constant term. 6c3 times x, 12c4 times x squared, 20c5 times x cubed, and so on. We probably won't need to go farther than that. Now that's the left-hand side of my equation. The right-hand side of my equation is x plus 3y. So 3y is going to triple all of my coefficients of y. So I'm going back up here and tripling everything. We'll leave the x off just for a second, but we're going to triple everything else. 3c3x cubed, 3c4x to the fourth, and so on. What about the x term? Well, not only are we tripling that coefficient of x, so we get 3c1, we're also adding an x. So it's going to be 3c1 plus 1. And now these are the series that should be equal to each other, which means 2c2 has to equal 3c0, 6c3 has to equal 3c1 plus 1, and so on. So. And again, we're going to stop once we figure out what c4 is, because that's we only want the first five terms again. So 2c2 equals 3c0. c0 was 4, so that tells me that 2c2 equals 12, which means that c2 is going to equal 6. The next equation is 6c3 equals 3c1 plus 1. c1 is negative 3, so that tells me 6c3 equals minus 8 which means that c3 is negative 8 divided by 6, also known as minus 4 thirds. And then finally, we've got one more equation, 12c4 equals 3c2. 12c4 equals 3c2. Remember, c2 was 6, so that tells me 12c4 is 3 times 6, which is 18. So c4 is 18 over 12, also known as 3 halves. So now we've got all five of our coefficients c0, c1, c2, c3, and c4, so we're ready to write our solution. So y is 4 minus 3x plus 6x squared 
minus 4 thirds x cubed plus 3 halves x to the fourth. And that's our power series representation of our solution to this differential equation. So for these kinds of problems, again, you're just doing what I'm doing here. You're looking at the initial values, using that to get started, to get the first coefficient. And then you're setting up your equation, setting up a power series for both sides of your equation, and then equating coefficients of equal powers of x. So something else that we talked about in this section was how we can use uh, power series to think about complex numbers in a different way. And what we ended up with was Demov's theorem, which was based on the power series representations for the exponential function sine and cosine. And now we can apply this to finding powers of complex numbers using some trigonometry and geometry. So the way we're going to think about this is we're going to look at this expression, 1 minus i to the sixth power. And we're going to try to understand how can we write 1 minus i as r e to the i theta. What's r and what's theta? Well, we're going to draw a graph and we're going to plot 1 minus i on our complex plane. So we've got an x-axis and an iy-axis. So the x-axis, that's the real part of my number, which is 1. And then minus i means I go down to negative i on my imaginary axis. And so that's where my complex number is. So there's two things I need to figure out. I need to figure out the distance that that point is from my origin, and I need to figure out the angle. Well, the angle is going to be negative 45 degrees, but we have to do this in radians, so we're going to write that as minus pi over 4. And then the distance here, just using my Pythagorean theorem, is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. That's going to be the square root of 2, because we went 1 in this direction and 1 in this direction, and so the distance to the origin to that point is radical 2. So this complex number in this kind of uh, geometric form is square root of 2 e to the i times pi over 4. And the advantage of writing this complex number in that way means that now when I want to raise this to the sixth power, all I have to do is raise this expression to the sixth power, and my rules of exponents are going to really help me out here, because this is going to be square root of 2 to the sixth power, and then e to the i times pi over 4 to the sixth power. If I raise square root of 2 to the sixth power, that's the same as raising 2 to the third power, which is 8. And then when I raise e to the i times pi over 4 to the 6th power, all I'm doing is multiplying that angle by 6. Uh, sorry, i got to back up here. That was negative pi over 4. So I've got a minus sign here, minus sign here, minus sign here. And minus sign here. Sorry about that. Okay, so our new complex number is 8 units away from the origin. And the angle is minus 3 pi over 2. So minus 3 pi over 2 is negative 270 degrees which is going to be three quarters of a turn. That's going to get me around here to the positive i, y axis. And I'm going eight units away from the origin. And so that complex number is going to be eight i. And that's it. So if we know a little bit of geometry, a little bit of trigonometry, this makes working with complex numbers much more, uh, much easier. Okay, similar problem here, same idea. We're going to take the number, the complex number that's inside those brackets and think of that in uh, geometric form, sometimes called polar form. So radical 3 over 2 plus 1 half, that means I'm going radical 3 over 2 in the x direction and 1 half i in the i y direction. And so that's going to give me this point here. And again, if you remember some of your trigonometry, that means that this angle is going to be 30 degrees, also known as pi over 6. And this distance, again using my Pythagorean theorem, works out to just be 1. So this complex number is r e to the i theta, so 1 e to the i times pi over 6. And so if I want to raise that to the fifth power, well, raising 1 to the fifth power, that doesn't do anything. I just get 1. And then I raise uh, e to the i pi over 6 to the fifth power. That just multiplies my angle by a factor of 5. So where is this complex number? So now my rotation is 5 pi over 6. That's 150 degrees. That's going to get me around to about here. And my distance from the origin is still 1. So using some trigonometry, it's not too hard to figure out that the complex number that I'm looking at is going to be minus radical 3 over 2, right? because I'm basically flipped over from where I was, plus i times 1 half, or 1 half i. And that's it for that one. All right, finally, one more of these. Find the expression square root of i. 
right? There's nothing that stops us from raising these to uh, fractional powers or negative powers, right? So again, makes these complex number expressions much easier to work with. All right, so what about i? We have to write i in this polar form. Well, i is on my i, y axis, one unit up from the origin. So the radius is one. What's the rotation? Well, the angle here would be pi over two, 90 degrees. So this is going to be one e to the i times pi over two. And so if I raise that to the one half power, that's raising one e to the i pi over two to the one half power, that's gonna be e i to the pi over four. So what's that complex number? Well, now my rotation is pi over four, 45 degrees. So it's gonna look something like that. I'm still one unit away from the origin. And again, using some trigonometry knowledge, I know that this distance is gonna be radical two over two. And this distance is gonna be radical two over two. So that means my complex number is radical two over two plus i times radical two over two. And that's the square root of i.